Gareth Patterson, you've just uh, recently launched a new book. Mm. This is how many in the series? This is the ninth Patterson book now. Nine. Yeah. And ninth what, book. what is the general um, uh, theme of the book's been? Ba basically, the, the, the theme of this book is really documenting what I've been doing for the last eight years, which is research on the, on the Neisner elephants and um, about the discoveries that we made along the way. And in a nutshell, what were those discoveries? Well, unique in the sense that, um, first of all, these elephants were thought to be confined to the forest and it was a doomed population and all the rest of it. And we found they're certainly not confined to the forest. They're, they're ranging over a vast area in the famed vast forest edge. And it's not a doomed population. It was thought that there was only one elephant left here. And um, we've got evidence now, DNA and field research evidence that um, looks at the figure now. It's closer to maybe uh, 10 or 11. So is it a viable population? It is. It is a viable population. And what the DNA work also showed is that there's more genetic diversity in, in our little tiny population here than what there is actually in the adult population. Obviously, once upon a time, they were one um, joined up population. So from, yeah, I mean the DNA side, the genetic side, it is a concern, but it could have been more of a concern than what it is at the moment. How has the uh, opening of the Garden of National Park <coughs> affected the elephants? I think, I think more and more we're going to see the elephants as the flagship of this national park. Um, you know, the elephants are so famous and so well loved in, in South Africa. And obviously you've got initiatives like the Eden to Addo Corridor initiative to join this area up one day with, um, with Addo. Um, and that's, that's a great vision. You know, if it takes 20 years, then let it take 20 years. But um, obviously to think of the two populations joining up would be fantastic. The pen pant noise is, is, is your friend Tuli. Is my friend Tuli. And, yeah. and Tuli is, is, uh, is probably quite an important part of your life, your, your, uh, your, your little the other, companion. The other side of... There's Tuli. Th there's Tuli. And, and how, and how did she get a name? She, she got her name, um, a friend of mine who, who picked her up as a tiny little puppy. Um, she was found near the Addo National Park when she was just about a week old. And this friend of mine spent a lot of time with me in the, in the forest, and he obviously heard a lot about my work with the lions in the, in the Tuli Bushlands in Botswana. So he named her, and then he couldn't keep her anymore um, as he was moving, and so Tuli ended up with me. It's not a happy story with the, with the, with the African lion. A lot of people don't realize it, but we're probably down to... Uh, as few as 13,000 lions in the whole of Africa. Now, when I first started out in my work, um, it was estimated to be about a quarter of a million. And 25 years before oh, really? that, maybe double that number. So the lion is a really endangered animal, and um, it's something that I'm going to be focusing again more and more on. What was that first book called? The very first book was a book called Cry for the Lions. And Gareth, we're coming now up to the... Um uh, now is the Literary Festival, what are you planning to do during the festival? Okay, during the festival what we're going to be doing is having a special screening of the film that was make, made on the, on the elephants in my work. It's called uh, The Search for the Neisner Elephants. It's a, it's a pretty much a, a, a full one-hour documentary. And then afterwards I'll be giving a little talk and also answering questions on my work. Gareth, what on earth happened here? Now, what happened here was um, the attention of a, of a musk bull. You know, they go every, every, um, every year they go through a cycle of, of musk and very, very aggressive. And uh, this one bull, Neisner bull, decided to take it up to his anger on this harvesting sign. You can see where the tusk went through here and over there as well. And he actually went through it on both sides. See here and here. In fact, when we found it, there was actually still blood on this sign. He'd, he'd cut himself right up the top of the, of the tusk. And this is where, literally, the bridge of the trunk, he was pounding against it. So they're not animals to be messed with. They're not fluffy toys. It's a, it's a little bit misleading. You know, you don't, don't want to give them a bad reputation. But like any bulls in musk, it's a very different animal. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde situation. And then, obviously, writing is important to you mm. and reading. Why would it be important to the man in the street? To read? Yes. I think, you know, reading is, it's, it's, you know, it, it employs another a part of the brain. I mean, to sit down and watch something on television is one thing. But um, it's the images. It's what, what it paints in your mind. I think it's the stimulation. And um, I, I'm, just, I'm just very gratified to see, for example, when I fly um, anywhere nowadays, is that I just notice, because I'm an author, because I'm, I'm aware of books, is how much people do read on planes and everything now. 
um, it seems like there's almost been a bit of a revival of reading in, 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 in some ways. Fantastic. How are the sales of your new book on? I believe it's going very, very well. Um, I believe it's going very well. Very excited because this month it launches in Australia <clears throat> and, um, and, and we're hoping other countries are going to follow. Can one see it anywhere on the web? You can, you yeah. can. Um, you can go on to Book SA, you can go on to any of Penguin's sites, you can go on to my site, which is garethpatterson.com. There's a lot of information. If you just go on to Google and just put in The Secret Elephants, Gareth Patterson, you'll find a lot of information there and articles as well. Gareth, behind you is an old map with pins on it that show uh, your early um, work, 2001. Mm. And you've discovered that the elephants have got a much bigger range now. It was thought to be about 100 square kilometers and now we're up to close on I estimate it's over a thousand now we can say it's over 700 at the moment but I think you know it's a minimum figure that one I think it's over a thousand and it's increasing all the time and Gareth you're, you're obviously a <coughs> field worker mm. uh, uh, how, how, does, how does the general public get to even experience these, these animals well what I've done now with the book coming out and with the with the documentary is that there was a lot of demand um, that from people wanting to go out into the forest with me and I decided to sort of formalize it, it a little bit by starting something called the, the Secret Elephants um, Forest Experience whereupon only four times a month I take small groups, only up to ten people at a time, out into the forest, into the central range uh, for people to really have an introduction into the world of the, uh, in, into the, world of the Neisner Elephants. So that's something nice that we're starting now. If we wanted to book, where would we go? Um, the best bet there would be go directly to the person who's doing the bookings, a lady called Roseanne Savory. Gareth Person, thank you very much. Thank you.